Now, a lot of sound cards these days have this cool metal plating on it. But how good is it? And does it do anything? And if it does anything, how effective is it? Let's find out in this video over here on Anton's Hardware Channel. Well, hello there everyone and welcome to a new video over here on Anton's Hardware Channel. Now today's topic is going to be EMI shielding because well, a lot of sound cards these days like this one, the Sound Blaster Z or the Xonar AE have well metal plating on it. The Xonar AE has a back plate on it and the Z has well a large window in it with a lot of metallic stuff around it. But what does that do? Well, let's take a closer look at what the function is of this metal shielding. Now the correct term for the metal shielding is EMI shielding or electromagnetic interference. Because in every single com electronic component there's a small um, electromagnetic field and that has an influence on the analog part inside your computer. So if you take a look at the computer case next to me, um, all the motors in there, like the fan for the CPU, this GPU fan, this system fan, all of those fans have little motors in them and they create a magnetic field. And this has a negative impact on the performance of a sound card in the case of humming, buzzing or introducing interference into the signal. So what this shield does is a sort of a Faraday cage just to, well, uh, eliminate all this interference. But I was wondering how good is it? And after creating the video, the Christmas special on how to, to improve your audio quality of your sound card without spending too much money, I found out that, well, using the back of your computer, the jack plugs of your, in the back of your computer instead of the front panel will give you an instant improvement in your audio quality. So, I was wondering how much of an influence does the EMI shielding have on the quality of the audio of your sound card? So what did I do? Well, I did a lot of testing. All the sound cards that I tested was were the ones with EMI shielding. So I did a test, took off the EMI shielding, did the test again, all with right mark audio analyzer, of course, to make it as objective as possible. Um, I did a lot of testing and I compared and crunched all the numbers and these are the results. But before we go over there, I wanted to say, well, what is the test bench that I used and what sound cards did I test? Let's start with this last one. In alphabetical order, it's the Asus Essence ST, its younger brother, the Asus Essence STX2, the Asus Strix Ray Pro, the Asus Xonar AE, the Asus Xonar D2, the Asus Xonar Phoebus Solo, the Creative Sound Blaster AE5, the Creative Sound Blaster X5 Titanium Fatality, the Creative Sound Blaster Z, the Creative Sound Blaster ZXR, the ESI 7.1 Hi-Fi, the EVGA NU, and the Teratech Orion 7.1 PCI Express. Now, to make everything as consistent as possible, I needed to have a computer with both PCI and PCI Express slots. And that's what this machine has. My regular test bench only has PCI Express, so I couldn't use that one. Now, what's inside this case is also interesting. This test bench consists of an AMD FX 8350, a Biostar A960D, 8GB of DDR3 Corsair Vengeance memory. I also use the only single slot video card that I have. Why? Well, I wanted to create as much EMI within the case as possible. And this is the Asus A8500GT and it creates a lot of noise with the tiny fan on it. And so for the results, well, the quick answer, does EMI shielding do anything? Yes, it does. A longer answer to it is yes, it does, but not for all sound cards. And well, the longest answer is, let's get into detail about why that is.
On average, you could see an improvement on the three front fronts where I tested. 1,75% in the noise level, which is the level where no sound is pre being produced by the cards, and Ridemark measures the level of background noise, so the lower the better. Also, the dynamic range saw an improvement of 2,53%. Now, dynamic range is the difference measured between the loudest sound and the quietest sound produced by the sound card, so the broader the range, the better. And last up is the stereo crosstalk. That saw an improvement of 2,94%. Now, stereo crosstalk is the amount of sound leaked from one channel to the other channel. In some ways, this is the EMI within the card itself. So the higher, the better the, the score is. The worst performers are the Sound Blaster XY, the Sound Blaster Z, the Essence ST, and the AESI Prodigy 7.1 Hi-Fi. Now, I don't know why, but somehow the shielding just doesn't work. The X5 has a nice EMI shield, but somehow it does the opposite of what it is meant to do. The Z has a huge plastic window in it, so I guess that the EMI sort of kept trapped in there, making the shield otherwise useless. Now surprisingly, the ASUS Essence ST is also a bad performer. While ASUS claims it is a reference sound card, it doesn't perform that well with the EMI shielding on it. Thankfully, the newer version, the STX2, does get some positive results. I was sort of sad to see the results from the ESI card. I had some high hopes, mainly because it looked so cool. And it was also the first card that I had that separated the digital, unshielded part from the shielded, analog part. Now, on the plus side, among the cards that did perform well, there are also some interesting results. For instance, the ASUS Xoner AE. This isn't really some EMI shielding, it's more an EMI backplate. And when creating the video about that card some time ago, I said that this was more for the show than that it does anything. Wrong. It does work and it gives it a solid place in the top three. And what does this complete ranking look like? Well, here it is. At the top you can see the sound card where EMI shielding doesn't have a positive effect on the overall sound quality. And starting with the Creative Sound Blaster X AE5, the EMI shielding does have a positive effect on the overall sound quality. Ending with the top 3, it's the ASUS Xoner AE, the ASUS RAID Strix Pro and on number 1, it's the EVGA NU. Again, this isn't the best sound card ever listing. No, it's just a ranking of cards that benefit the most from EMI shielding. So, with this ending, I would like to thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video with some very interesting results and things that I just didn't expect. Um, the first thing that, oh, where is it? It's over here. The thing that I didn't expect was that the backplate of this sound card performed so well. I mean, I thought, well, the EMI casing always has to encompass the components themselves, but this EMI shielding this backplate does perform really well. Uh, that was one of the more interesting things to see. Also, the, the thing that the stereo crosstalk is also affected by EMI was something that made me wonder why that is. And, very interesting result. But that's it for me for today, and I would like to see you in the next one. See you then. Bye-bye.